I'm here today with Mariana Mazzucato, um, who's a professor of economics at the Science Policy Research Unit, which is SPRU, at the University of Sussex, um, and also Randy Ray, um, who's a professor of economics at the University of Missouri at Kansas City and a senior scholar at the Levy Institute. Um, and they are grantees for a very, a very challenging and interesting project um, under the fascinating title, Financing Innovation, Creative Destruction versus Destructive Creation. Um, welcome. Uh, Mariana, yes. if I can start with you. Um, I've just been reviewing your proposal, and uh, the idea seems to be to sort of bring micro and macro, bring uh, the theory of innovation and the theory of sort of macroeconomic fluctuation, business cycle fluctuation, kind of together. And what's interesting to me, because I've, I, when I was a, a, a child, I read Schumpeter and his theory of economic development, and he had them together as a matter of fact. Mm. Um, and, and so do you see this project? Uh, and I know you're a Schumpeter sort of expert. You take, you take your uh, inspiration from Schumpeter. Mm. Um, is, that, is that the idea, to bring back together the things Schumpeter had but have sort of things that have wandered apart? Yes. I mean, I would say that the idea is to bring innovation and finance together in a serious way. You know, Schumpeter talks about innovation, and he talks about different types of firms needing different types of finance. Um, so, you know, small, innovative, gazelle-type firms will tend to go more towards, say, venture capitalist business angels. Larger firms might be able to use retained earnings and go to the big banks. But in fact, what you find is that what finance they actually end up receiving also affects the kind of innovation they end up doing. What was interesting in Schumpeter is he sort of changed his mind in the beginning in theory of economic development when he talked about the role of the entrepreneur. He really focused a lot on small firms. But the problem is that as innovation became more and more expensive, as these big R&D laboratories became the way that innovation was done, he really started to ask, you know, what kind of firms are actually going to be able to afford these kind of big labs. This is in his and, later, later work, in his like later in work. Socialism, Capitalism, Democracy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so really the question is, under what conditions do we actually find that it's the large or the small firms that are best able to innovate, and mm -hmm. how do these conditions change over time? Mm -hmm. And when you do that kind of dynamic analysis, you also then start finding that the kind of finance that these firms need changes over time. Uh, and so let me turn to Randy. So both the nature of innovation has changed, but also the nature of finance has changed. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you're saying that, so you're, what you're bringing to this project is the Keynes angle um, mm -hmm. and the kind of American and updated version of the Keynes angle that comes from Hyman Minsky. Okay. And, and as you know, yeah. uh, Minsky's earliest work was on financial innovation. So uh, Schumpeter was his dissertation advisor, mm -hmm. and so he got the idea of innovation from Schumpeter, and he brought that to an analysis of the financial sector. And so as Mariana has been um, saying, what has happened is that the financial sector, of course, continued to evolve and innovate. And um, uh, over a very long term, it has been transformed. Mm -hmm. So that it's very different from not only the time that Schumpeter originally was writing, but also very different from the early post-war period. And, mm -hmm. and so what Minsky was interested in in his last work in the 1990s, before he died in 96, was um, this theme that f the financial sector has evolved to a position where it is not really financing the capital development of the economy. And <clears throat> so what he wanted to do was to reconstitute the financial system. Now, so now I see where your title comes from, where you mm -hmm. say creative destruction, that's the Schumpeter part. Yeah. And then destructive creation, that's your concern that modern finance is, is not building the capital infrastructure that's right. of, of, of the modern economy. Yeah. And, and yeah. by capital development, we define that very broadly. So we want to redirect the financial system to finance the capital development of the economy very broadly defined. Okay, I think I got that. Okay. Now, the way this project is working, you each sort of, you come from Spru, mm -hmm. and that's what he called the Schumpeterian sort of side, and you come from Levy, mm -hmm. and that's the minsky Keynes sort of side, mm -hmm. and you're bringing these two uh, traditions and two groups of people, actually, yes. together to talk with each other yeah. and see what magic comes from that. Yeah. What we really want to do is to really consider how is some of the most path-breaking work within the innovation, the evolutionary economics literature, which has really looked at the characteristics of innovation. How do those insights help us then understand 
this relationship with, again, using the deep insights of Minsky. I so, see. I mean, just to give you an example, there's three characteristics of innovation that people like Bill Azonik and I have been writing about, which is that it's, it's, it's collective, it's uncertain, and it's cumulative. You know, people like Paul David also have written a lot about the path-dependent, persistent nature of innovation. So innovation today leads to innovation tomorrow. It is not a Gaussian random walk. So if you come in late, as venture capital has come in late, say in both biotech or today in green technology, a sector that we're actually studying, um, if innovation was just a random walk, then it wouldn't matter that you come in late. You would only be able to capture your sort of marginal contribution. If instead it's cumulative, which we've been studying at the sectoral and firm level, then you are in theory, if policy is allowing you to, because incentives are wrong, able to capture the whole integral under that cumulative distribution curve. And this is what we've seen happen is that policies, the incentives that are out there right now, really are more about destructive creation, which is speculation aimed at speculation as opposed to innovation and capital development. So I'm going to ask you, uh, uh, Mariana, how did you get into this? Um, actually, I'm looking at your CV here mm -hmm. and I see that your undergraduate degree is not in economics, okay, that you studied. Um, what do I have here? History and international studies. Yeah, well, I um, took some economics classes, but actually when I was in Boston, it, this was in the era of the um, war in Nicaragua, of apartheid, and all my friends, when they were, you know, when they were expressing their progressive side, they were always worried about other countries. No one was actually looking at the problems in Boston. And when I did start looking in Boston, I found that you had a real sort of labor issue. You know, I started working with labor unions, which in those t years were actually quite active in particular sectors. And I realized how little I understood about sort of production, how changing production conditions mm. affected workers. That got me interested in reading both Marx and then Schumpeter. And later, from this interest in understanding capitalism as, again, a dynamic system, I got very interested in the evolutionary approach to economics, um, you know, Nelson and Winter, Giovanni Dozzi, who I ended up writing with. So your own intellectual trajectory um, brought you, you know, from this interest, this concern for the plight of, of workers in Boston to thinking about these issues of innovation using Schumpeter as your, as your base. Yes. And you built on that, you know, in your, in your work in your PhD dissertation, um, yep. which you went to the new school. Yes. And then you went on and built your career basically in, in the UK and in Europe. Yeah. Um, and in some of the policy circles in, in the European Commission. Yes. And, but my, my PhD and my master's was in economics and I was focusing on market share dynamics. And I would say what's very interesting today is that we don't talk about the competitive processes enough, I mean, mm. even within the Schumpeterian work. So Randy, let me ask you, sort of how did you get into this? Um, I'm looking at your CV and I see that you have an undergraduate degree sort of in psychology and general social science, but not much in economics. Zero. <laughs> Zero in economics. So where did that come from, that you started to get interested in economics? Uh, I worked in government after graduating and took courses at night and I was very fortunate. This is in California. In California, yeah. uh, California State Sacramento happened to have a very unusual economics department that had uh, the full range of Marxist, uh, the institutionalists, uh, neoclassicals of course, and people who also were interested in Keynes. And I took courses at night and eventually they convinced me to pursue a PhD in economics and John Henry, who was there at the time, said, Hyman Minsky is probably the best Keynesian in the United States. You ought to go try to work with him. Hmm. And so you got your PhD from Washington University. So hopefully we'll bring this. We'll bring these two uh, two sides, mm -hmm. which have moved in their their different directions, yeah. but now create a fertile mix, a fertile marriage, and new and new economic thinking. And we're very happy to welcome you both to the stable of INET economists. Thank you. Thanks.